March 1. Nazarite Laws Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people, either men or women, take the special vow of a Nazarite, setting themselves apart to the Lord in a special way, they must give up wine and other alcoholic drinks. They must not use vinegar made from wine or from other alcoholic drinks. They must not drink fresh grape juice, and they must not eat grapes or raisins. As long as they are bound by their Nazarite vow, they are not allowed to eat or drink anything that comes from a grapevine, not even the grape seeds or skins. They must never cut their hair throughout the time of their vow, for they are holy and set apart to the Lord. Until the time of their vow has been fulfilled, they must let their hair grow long, and they must not go near a dead body during the entire period of their vow to the Lord. Even if the dead person is their own father, mother, brother, or sister, they must not defile themselves, for the hair on their head is the symbol of their separation to God. This requirement applies as long as they are set apart to the Lord. If someone falls dead beside them, the hair they have dedicated will be defiled. They must wait for seven days and then shave their heads. Then they will be cleansed from their defilement. On the eighth day, they must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will offer one of the birds for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. In this way, he will purify them from the guilt they incurred through contact with the dead body. Then they must reaffirm their commitment and let their hair begin to grow again. The days of their vow that were completed before their defilement no longer count. They must rededicate themselves to the Lord as a Nazarite for the full term of their vow, and each must bring a one-year-old male lamb for a guilt offering. This is the ritual law for Nazarites. At the conclusion of their time of separation as Nazarites, they must each go to the entrance of the tabernacle and offer their sacrifices to the Lord. A one-year-old male lamb without defect for a burnt offering. A one-year-old female lamb without defect for a sin offering. A ram without defect for a peace offering. A basket of bread made without yeast. Cakes of choice flour mixed with olive oil and wafers spread with olive oil, along with their prescribed grain offerings and liquid offerings. The priest will present these offerings before the Lord, first the sin offering and the burnt offering, then the ram for a peace offering, along with the basket of bread made without yeast. The priest must also present the prescribed grain offering and liquid offering to the Lord. Then the Nazarites will shave their heads at the entrance of the tabernacle. They will take the hair that had been dedicated and place it on the fire beneath the peace offering sacrifice. After the Nazarite's head has been shaved, the priest will take for each of them the boiled shoulder of the ram, and he will take from the basket a cake and a wafer made without yeast. He will put them all into the Nazarite's hands. Then the priest will lift them up as a special offering before the Lord. These are holy portions for the priest, along with the breast of the special offering and the thigh of the sacred offering that are lifted up before the Lord. After this ceremony, the Nazarites may again drink wine. This is the ritual law of the Nazarites who vow to bring these offerings to the Lord. They may also bring additional offerings if they can afford it. And they must be careful to do whatever they vowed when they set themselves apart as Nazarites. The Priestly Blessing Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. The Silver Trumpets Now the Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver for calling the community to assemble and for signaling the breaking of camp. When both trumpets are blown, everyone must gather before you at the entrance of the tabernacle. But if only one trumpet is blown, then only the leaders, the heads of the clans of Israel, must present themselves to you. When you sound the signal to move on, the tribes camped on the east side of the tabernacle must break camp and move forward. When you sound the signal a second time, the tribes camped on the south will follow. You must sound short blasts as the signal for moving on. But when you call the people to an assembly, blow the trumpets with a different signal. 
Only the priests, Aaron's descendants, are allowed to blow the trumpets. This is a permanent law for you to be observed from generation to generation. When you arrive in your own land and go to war against your enemies who attack you, sound the alarm with the trumpets. Then the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in times of gladness, too, sounding them at your annual festivals and at the beginning of each month. And blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and peace offerings. The trumpets will remind the Lord your God of His covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. The Israelites leave Sinai. In the second year after Israel's departure from Egypt, on the twentieth day of the second month, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle of the covenant. So the Israelites set out from the wilderness of Sinai and traveled on from place to place until the cloud stopped in the wilderness of Paran. When the people set out for the first time, following the instructions the Lord had given through Moses, Judah's troops led the way. They marched behind their banner, and their leader was Nashon, son of Amminadab. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Issachar, led by Nathanael, son of Zor, and the troops of the tribe of Zebulun, led by Eliab, son of Helon. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonite and Merarite divisions of the Levites were next in the line of march, carrying the tabernacle with them. Reuben's troops went next, marching behind their banner. Their leader was Elizer, son of Shadar. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Simeon, led by Shelomiel, son of Zerushaddai, and the troops of the tribe of Gad, led by Eliasaf, son of Duel. Next came the Kohathite division of the Levites carrying the sacred objects from the tabernacle. Before they arrived at the next camp, the tabernacle would already be set up at its new location. Ephraim's troops went next, marching behind their banner. Their leader was Elishama, son of Amihud. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Manasseh, led by Gamaliel, son of Pedazer, and the troops of the tribe of Benjamin, led by Abidin, son of Gideoni. Dan's troops went last, marching behind their banner and serving as the rear guard for all the tribal camps. Their leader was Ahizer, son of Amishadai. They were joined by the troops of the tribe of Asher, led by Pajil, son of Akron, and the troops of the tribe of Naphtali, led by Ahira, son of Enon. This was the order in which the Israelites marched, division by division. One day Moses said to his brother-in-law, Hobab, son of Ruel, the Midianite, We are on our way to the place the Lord promised us, for he said, I will give it to you. Come with us, and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised wonderful blessings for Israel. But Hobab replied, No, I will not go. I must return to my own land and family. Please don't leave us, Moses pleaded. You know the places in the wilderness where we should camp. Come be our guide. If you do, we'll share with you all the blessings the Lord gives us. They marched for three days after leaving the mountain of the Lord, with the ark of the Lord's covenant moving ahead of them to show them where to stop and rest. As they moved on each day, the cloud of the Lord hovered over them. And whenever the ark set out, Moses would shout, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee before you. And when the ark was set down, he would say, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel.